What's going on guys? Danny from Story Restoration. It's been a while since I did any updates on the 2024 Denali Ultimate. Um, but as you can see, we have the hood open, not because there's any issues with the truck, but because we're actually getting ready to put on some, uh, some modifications. And jump right into installing this. Set that there, just so we have something to look at. And we're going to go ahead and remove the air intake system here. We're going to start right here. Uh, I will probably end up removing the air box just because I'm doing other modifications while I'm in here. Uh, but for this particular install, you can remove it here and right here and pull this whole assembly out. So let's go ahead and back these out. Make sure that's loose. And we'll come down here. Same thing here. We'll take a screwdriver and just loosely loosen that up. You can see that one's already loose. And we'll do the same thing over here. And then we'll pull this whole assembly out. There is actually a bolt that holds this assembly in right there where my ex extension is. Right there. It's a 13 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and loosen that up. Now we can take this whole assembly here and set it also to the side. And now we can see right down in there, uh, we can see our belt assembly or alternator. And this is actually the piece we're gonna be replacing here. It is a little dark. Let me get a little better lighting down in there. And again, with that out of the way, uh, this is actually the piece we're replacing. The stock GM is plastic and the Banks is a nice cast aluminum piece. Uh, a lot higher flow. But uh, that unfortunately was the easy part. Taking that air in intake system off is extremely easy. Um, now comes to a little bit harder part. Look at our new piece here. There's two bolts, one there, one there. One's pretty easy to get to. Is right there. And the other is obviously you can see it pretty easy, but actually getting to it is a very different uh, set of circumstances. Pretty much the AC compressor is in the way. Now it's not the end of the world to remove that. And before we actually take the mouthpiece off, we're going to take this crankcase breather off. It does have a permanent band uh, clamp of sorts. They put it on there and then cinch it down and it's it's not removable in the normal way so there's no screw to remove so we're just going to take a pry bar here and very gently go in just about like that and slowly start pulling that and it will if you work it back and forth a little bit if you're worried about saving your factory mouthpiece here um definitely be gentle and careful but it, it will 100% pop off right there we got it actually came off really easy so once we have it off you can see this clamp has no it's just a, a round piece of metal pretty much that was cinched down on there so we can actually kind of crush this and pry this off get rid of that banks does supply a worm uh, screw like your normal hose clamp to put that back on so we'll just kind of push this to the side for now and the only thing we have left is actually to take those two 13 millimeter bolts out and to kind of show you my setup here I have I actually have a uh, swivel ratchet head but you don't really need that we have a decently long extension it's probably um, 12 13 inches long and it is a wobble extension so with that we can reach right through here right to the side of the alternator and get right on that 13 millimeter and go ahead and break that side loose and that one will come right out now be careful you do not want to drop that bolt down into the valley so we'll get a magnet in there too and be nice and careful as we take that out i'm just going to loosen it for now and now for the hard side all right so this is this applies to the easy side as you can see i have my socket i have the bolt removed and it's not falling out of my socket 
What I like to do, and I use this a lot with difficult bolts, and we're going to use the same approach to the, the more difficult side, the driver's side bolt. I use these blue shop towels, and I rip a little piece off, jam it in the socket, and then when you put the socket on the bolt, it makes a slight interference fit. Uh, you can definitely still jam the socket on there. It still works perfectly fine, but you really got to pull to get that bolt back out. As you can see, there's the piece of blue shop towel that was in there and our bolt is safely removed. So we'll put that in our magnetic holder over here. Be patient, uh, you'll slip off a bunch of times. The shop towel method may not work if the socket slips off and it keeps slipping off. Uh, eventually, the universal joint gets too long. So we ended up coming back to just the uh, wobble extension, as you can see. And we actually, instead of going from this direction, I switched up and went down through this direction. It's a little tight to get through there. And you can actually push this back against the turbo and go back in through. And uh, it barely grabs onto that. The socket barely grabs onto the bolt. You usually get like one turn, one eighth of a turn before it slips off and you can just kind of keep going with that. Uh, this mouthpiece does do a good job of holding the factory bolt. And as you can see, we're now loose and we can just kind of guide that right out. Twist it around a little bit. Our bolt is actually hitting, so once we get out so far, I can actually hold that up. I can hold you here and reach down and pull the bolt out. Once the bolt's pulled back enough, this will slip out. And if we get our light back up here so we can see, obviously that's out. The bolt is still in there. It's uh, kind of even difficult to pull it out. So we got it out there, but it does, like I said, the factory mouthpiece does do a good job of holding that bolt. So um, twist and turn and that does pop out. Now here is our factory piece against the banks piece. You can see a huge difference here. Or two pieces side by side. It's not a dramatically different opening size because they do have to retain that factory anti-surge aspect, but it, it is definitely bigger. Um, you can see the opening there. We can get that one to quit. You can see that opening there. We can see this one here. So definitely a bigger opening with still retaining what they need to retain to make this work dependably and still be under warranties. Not only the opening here, but if we turn these around, see if we can get our light to shine through there. This one, I mean, you can see the light through there, uh, but it's a pretty hard angle to get there. If I hold this one up by that same port, much bigger light source. So it's a much straighter path. Um, they can only do so much again because of that opening, but definitely a much bigger straight path compared to that. Something else to remember is, is this is the suction side of the turbo. So this is the side of the turbo that connects to your air box. So it has not, it's not under pressure at all. So if you have a restriction in this side, it's going to make everything else magnified as it goes through the compression cycle uh, with the turbo itself and then through the boost tubes through the intercooler if you have a restriction here much worse case scenario now banks does supply hardware for this so two new bolts and they actually have a 10 millimeter head on them a new clamp for your PCV breather system and a new GM gasket to seal against the inlet of the turbo housing. So right there is where it's gonna go. Uh, technically, you probably could reuse your stock one. This truck only has 9,000 miles on it, by the way. Um, 
So this one's perfectly fine, but we're going to keep this intact with that. And like I said, Banks did supply a brand new GM part. Right there is your part number. And make sure you install this before you go through all the trouble of putting this on, or you'll be taking it right back off, which would suck. We're going to show every step just because, you know, just because this is very self-explanatory, but new gasket just goes in the groove and you just kind of press it and it holds itself in place. Again, very self-explanatory, but if you skip a step, someone will complain you didn't show a step that they were looking for. So very easy to go in, just work your way around, make sure it's fully seated and that will stay. So we can actually turn that upside down, shake it. The bolts they give you, however, are pretty loose. They do fall right out. And again, trying to show you every step of the way here, the best I can, uh, you're not gonna see everything. So if I, if I run into something that's kind of difficult, I'm gonna back up and then show you how I overcome it. So putting this piece in, you go in and it seems like it's not gonna fit. So you go in there and it's just, it's not gonna go. But all you have to really do is really lift up on this piece and it slips right in. And once it slips in, again, this harness up here, pull it up over, you can hear it just slipped in further. And then look in through. And as you're looking in through, you can actually take and line that up with the turbo, there we go. Nice and gentle. So that's really, really close. We can actually get our bolt started there. And again, we're gonna start with the passenger side bolt. You didn't have much room to begin with, and now you have even less because uh, this new piece is very, very much bigger. All right, I think we have enough light here so we can get that to balance. We're gonna take our socket, we're going to take our blue shop towel, corner of it, just drape it over the socket there. If you never use this trick, you really got to try it. It really gets you out of some jams. So we'll make sure we can see what we're doing here. We'll take and wiggle that bolt in. Again, it's kind of a, a light press fit. And then we can actually tear the shop towel around the bolt. Clean it up a little bit. And... That is not going anywhere. You actually have to wiggle it to get it off. Uh, can be an issue sometimes. Um, usually once you start tor torquing that, um, it applies some pressure. It squishes that towel a little bit more and it's easier to get the socket off. But right now you really got to work to get that socket off. So with that in there, I'm going to attempt to show you this. Uh, we'll take our, our socket with the bolt cap captured in there and just come right in let me pull back a little bit right in and we can get our bolt right in the housing there and then we'll just move this housing around till it lines up with the bolt hole the threads in the uh, turbo itself get you a better view here and then we can just kind of twist that in get that started make sure you don't cross thread it and we'll go in nice and easy leave that loose enough but that actually gets us indexed in the right place so we can tackle that more difficult driver's side so we started putting that back together and try and get that bolt started and i figured uh i just came to the realization yes it's doable but you know what the average guy is not going to have the patience to do that and it's dumb so just a little bit more time we can have the ac compressor off the belt off ac compressor unbolted set to the side and you can go right in and get to both of those bolts nice and cleanly. Um, I mean, if you're struggling with that and you're frustrated, you're not going to enjoy the install. You're not going to, uh, you're going to get very frustrated. If you drop that bolt, you're going to get extremely frustrated. If you cross thread that bolt, you're going to have a really, really bad day and um, hate life. So why go through all that? Yes, it's doable. However, as you can see, we got it pulled back out, set aside. We did get the air box out. Uh, the air box is extremely easy to remove. We already had the air ducting off. We have this connector right here. 
pull the safety, squeeze it, pull it off for the mass airflow sensor. One bolt right here. We can get our light. One bolt right there. Uh, and then the air box assembly just lifts up and out of the truck. And with that up and out of the truck, now we can actually, I'm putting air charge pipes on it anyway. So I was going to do that regardless. So still that took, you know, all of 30 seconds to do. So why not just make life easier um, and get rid of that? Now we have tons of room to get in here. Uh, to remove our belt. Again, I am putting this charge pipe on. Very easy to remove this cold side. We have a sensor here. I can take off the safety, squeeze it, release it. We'll tuck it to the side. We have our quick release on the piping itself. Let me get some lighting right here. This little tab that's going to release it. And we can, there's two of them, and we can just pop it off. So one right here, one right there, literally pops off. It's now out of your way. If you weren't doing charge pipes, you can just set this to the side. Right here's the belt tensioner, half inch square right here. We leave the belt pressure off of the, we can leave it routed. We just, once we get that tension off, we can slip it off the AC compressor. Um, this, this connector here, there's a little tab right here, push in on with your thumb, pull up and set that to the side. Again, be careful with these harnesses. This truck's all essentially brand new, but if you're dealing with an older truck, be careful with these. You can break stuff. Um, that's out of the way. Um, that air intake tube, there is a little washer right here. Let me get my hand on this. So be careful just throwing that around. We're gonna set that to the side so we don't lose it. We have a 13, no, I guess they're 15 too. So a nut there, a nut there. This bracket will come off and then we can actually get to our mounting bolts. One there, one there, one back here. And then the little bit more difficult one, fortunately we have that mouthpiece off so we can use a wrench on it. If you didn't have that mouthpiece off, it is a little difficult to get to that because you can't just back it out. You'll hit this AC line because the stud sticks up. Once we get this, once we get those other three out, this compressor will start coming loose as we remove, loosen this bolt and we can actually lift that as we remove it. So again with our half inch ratchet in that square on the tensioner and this is no different than if you were going to change the belt you would have to do the same process you'd actually have to do a little bit more and remove the fan belt also but uh, we don't need to go that far we'll just relieve tension here so with that we can push down you can see stuff starting to move we can relieve pressure slip the belt off the ac compressor release this tensioner watch your fingers and then just take the mounting bolts out. And as you can see, we have the belt off the pulley there. And again, we're just going to go ahead and remove these mounting bolts. There is some harnesses, um, some switches. Let me get my light set up here. Uh, so one right here and one right here. They come off the same way. The little safety tab, you pull. You can get your finger on it and then squeeze down. <clears throat> Little wiggle and they pop right off just like that so we'll take that one off get it out of the way and then the one in the back here just to be safe as we're moving it not to break anything again once you have the two 13 millimeter nuts off this bracket can lift right off we'll set that to the side and now we have 15 millimeter 15 millimeter 15 millimeter and as we'll take a wrench and as we're loosening this one we'll lift the compressor itself and uh, that'll lift up right out of the way I guess we should pop this pressure switch plug off since we're right here make sure we don't damage any of that now we're, we're kind of free to go again these are hard lines here they are soft lines here so if you Gently lift that up and pivoted it and set it over in this area. You have free, 
free room, a lot more clearance. And just like that, again, that, that bolt, as you're loosening it, you lift the compressor. Um, and then the compressor just lifts right up out. Um, you can actually set it right on this side, right on the upper hose. And look at all the room we have now. So uh, definitely, if you're on the fence about removing this, don't, don't be. Uh, much, much quicker, much less stress just to remove the AC compressor out of the way and uh, have a clear shot for this Monster Ram mouthpiece. So uh, I set it to the side just to give more filming room here, but now again, we'll make sure all this is clean, the mounting surface, and we have mega clearance now. This will literally drop right in there. Kind of the same deal, lifting up. We can go ahead and line up our bolt holes. Again, making sure this harness isn't pinched. It'll come up away a little bit. That's that's good, just make sure it's not on the top of that bolt. Um, and you can actually reach down and start that by hand now if you want. So 100, 110% worth just taking the extra five minutes, really. That's all it takes to remove that. And if you're doing, again, the charge tube, you're already halfway there. So in my opinion, much better idea, much less stress. And we're actually gonna start this side first because now this is the easy side. So like I said, we can actually reach right down in there and We'll move this around a little bit and line up that thread. That's all it is. You can run that in right by hand. The other side we can get with an extension and we'll go ahead and cinch these down and then we'll just double check, make sure we're not pinching anything. Um, we'll wait to hook our PCV breather back up so we get the AC compressor back in place. All right, with that cinched down, we're pretty much done. All we gotta do is reinstall the AC compressor. Um, again, if you cut this stud off the top of this back bolt, uh, you can get a open end or close end wrench on it. And then it'll be a little bit quicker to finish that. This, this front bolt actually, I just left it in there, there's no sense removing it, but it is a little close there, as you can see, so we can just leave that one in too. Um, but we can look down inside, you can actually see the turbo now, or the impeller, and you can see all the way around, we don't have anything pinched. Our uh, bolt, we'll set that light there. Our wiring harness at our bolt, we have good play all through there and again we have some sheathing on there to keep that from rubbing through i believe that's probably the temp sensor there we don't want any issues with that later on down the road did forget to mention i'll try to put it on the screen as i'm going here but uh, 18 foot pounds is what the bolts those 10 millimeter new bolts for this monster ram get torqued to all right, with that bullet back down, tightened up, we're going to go ahead and pop our sensors in before we forget. So that one clicks in, push our safety on. Uh, the back one is here somewhere. There it is. Pops in, click, safety click. This top one here, same deal. Click, safety click. We'll put our loom holder back on the stub back here. Um, we have our bracket to go back on here. That's backwards. We'll put that back on. Two 13 millimeter nuts to hold that down. And then this clips right back into that. We're not going to forget to put our little bushing back on. Grommet sits in that for that silencer on the air intake. This is clipped back in. Uh, make sure all of your wire holders are back in place. Everything's plugged in. Everything looks good. Um, we can actually take and put our PCV 
hose back on, breather hose. Again, um, you can reuse this. You can jam the hose down on. This will still stay put. However, Banks does give you a replacement clamp, which we're going to use. And to get the old one off here, you just kind of wiggle it down. The hose is pliable, so you can just kind of squeeze the hose and wiggle that down much easier with two hands. Once the belt's on, for me, that's going to be it because I'm moving on to the cold air um, intake tube upgrade. Um, but for if you if you were doing this and you were done there and going just being done with this, we just snap this boost tube back on. It literally lines back up with this notch. You push up, pops in. You're gonna hook your electrical connector back in and reinstall your air box assembly. Just pops back in. Make sure you line up this spot here. Put your nut back on once you get these two grommets in place and then reconnect your air tube here. And again, couple connections, your uh, mass airflow sensor connector and whatever. This is actually for the boost tube here. Intake air temp probably, but I'm not 100% sure. Just verify your work. Make sure everything is good. Clamps are tight, so one here, one at the air box itself. Um, once that resonator's in, we have our bushing back in place, so we'll put the nut back on there and uh, seal this up and go enjoy more power. And thanks for stopping by. Have a good day.